this is an update on the SGR looper circuit, and uh, you can check out the new schematic at laserhacker.com, see the video description for a link to that. Um, I was doing a long run duration test, and I was in a few hours into this uh, when the cat knocked a cup of water across the table around on 11 o'clock at night. So that interrupted that test, and I decided to take this video on the front of that longer rambling video clip for those who just want the quick um, overview as to my progress on this circuit and where I'm at. So this is the quick uh, update. If you want to see the whole clip, continue to watch through. But for those who just want the quick update, here it is, folks. You can see the whole circuit laid out here on the board. I have no larger electrolytic capacitor in the circuit at this point. I have this small uh, ceramic capacitor. So the components are the ceramic capacitor, transistor, um, diodes. I've got three on the top here and three on the bottom. Six. They're all in parallel. See the schematic for information on that. So I'm going to start the uh, circuit up. That's it. One touch. You can see from that the reason that I'm interested in these circuits for, for their flashlight potential. Because to be able to just give a quick touch and then run on like this just from that initial charge can make a very interesting flashlight. Um, now that this one is drawing such an incredibly low amount of uh, current, it also has a lot of potential for coupling with crystal cells. And I've done some long, uh, long dura duration testing with crystal cells, and I'd love to couple a circuit like this up to the crystal cells because uh, the current draw is so low now. It's down at microamp to well under microamp current draws. And yet I still have a nice intensity of light, especially for that low current draw. So at this point, I'll continue to uh, scale the system up. Uh, now I'm, I've worked down small and dim and, and everything in the small side. I want to try to take some of what I've learned and scale it up to the uh, more usable light side of things and see what I can accomplish there. But anyway, again, this is just a quick little video here at the front of the longer video. So for those who want to carry on through the longer video, enjoy that. It's long, interrupted, and rambling, but for those who want the overview, this is it. And uh, I was very impressed when I was able to get the circuit running at this level. So you can uh, see a little bit of green light there falling on my hand. Let me see if I can get it on the table. So it does throw some light. It shows it better on a white wall. If you want to get more light out of it, you can increase the resistance at this point. So there we go. So I've increased the resistance there. Now, of course, that does shorten the runtime. And let me just give an overview of that. So I'll add a little bit of resistance and hold it there. And you can see that it does ring on even at a brighter setting for quite a while. So by tuning this, you can adjust the amount of light output that you want to get out of the circuit. So I release, it goes back down to the dimmer mode and just runs on and on and on. So overall, it's a very versatile circuit. Again, I'm going to start scaling it up now and doing some larger load testing, etc. But I don't know what else to say, guys. It's late. Let's all keep experimenting and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I just want to show the little off-the-shelf component uh, build that I did. I used a transformer from Electronic Goldmine. I've got a uh, ceramic capacitor there, a couple of LEDs and some diodes, and that's all there is to this. It's a very simple circuit. It does not run as efficiently as the pot core one, I want to get some smaller pot cores and try to make a really small compact unit that runs at this efficiency, this under one microamp super efficient mode, and I just haven't been able to get that yet with these standard components, but I'll keep working toward it. Um, so yeah, let's start this up so you can see. One touch, it starts right up, and it runs, but it draws a lot more current than this one does, and it's not as bright. So it's still... Uh, pretty good when you compare it to some of the previous uh, long run circuits that I built up prior to this, but uh, it's nowhere near what this one's running as. So let me go ahead and start this one. There you go. You can see that that one's substantially brighter and it will run for a much longer time than this one. So, But still, this does show you can create a similar type circuit with just a little uh, key core basic parts and stuff. So. Anyway, um, let me go ahead and I'll show you a few more tests with this. Okay, so I'm going to start this one up here. There we go. And I'm going to take it uh, over to the microwave. Everybody always wants to see the microwave test, so put this one in the microwave. The microwave is unplugged at this point. 
So, put it back in there. And you can see it just fine in there, running along. So, it passes the microwave test. And this, this whole time, it's running on just the little tiny uh, ceramic capacitors that are in there. So you can see that little tiny ceramic capacitor just above the transistor there. So that's what this is running on. Uh, let me just show the uh, light output from it here on the wall. You can see there's a very dim amount of light output. But you do see it on the wall. Now I'm going to add a little bit of resistance and show you how we can increase that. So you see that very bright light output from the uh, circuit when I touch it with my thumb like that? And I just uh, discharged it, so I will uh, do one more bright run with it. All right, so here we go. So this is just going to be a little resistance across the uh, diodes added. You can see it's quite bright. And uh, that's where I see some potential for a flashlight type device, because that little tiny ceramic capacitor there is very, very small charges very very quickly doesn't have uh, leakage issues like a lot of the uh, electrolytic capacitors so you can see that that's that's pretty cool very very simple uh, circuit still and uh, definitely a lot of improvement so I'm gonna add more resistance here uh, I just stopped it there's a certain point where the amount of resistance you have creates a nice balance and if you had too much, it'll run out a lot faster like you just saw there. So, Experimenting with that, you can uh, make some nice adjustments. So that's, that's a pretty nice setting there. I'm going to crank it up a little more and it goes out. So this can run on for a very, very long time in this super uh, simple mode. This one runs on for quite a while, but not nearly as long. And uh, so anyway, let's get ready to do the long, long run with this particular setup in which I'll be adding a 10 volt, 3,300 microfarad capacitor to this. We'll set it up next to a uh, timer and let it run from there. So now at this point, um, it seems very obvious to me that supercapacitors are not necessary to create long runners with this kind of a thing. There was a lot of discussion as to hidden supercapacitors and things along that line. If you look at this, these little ceramic capacitors are really, really tiny. And if I can do this with these little ceramic capacitors with this simple circuit, I don't see any reason to utilize supercapacitors in or you know hiding them inside the electrolytic capacitors or things like that. I just don't see that as necessary at this point. You can achieve Decent brightness with long run times without resorting to doing that kind of a thing. Now, whether or not other folks are faking their devices, I have no idea. But I would encourage folks to build up this uh, particular schematic and do their own experiments and, uh, you know, share their results, share what they find. So, All right, so I'm ready to start the uh, long-term run test here. And if you're wondering what all the noise is, um, I've got an object 3D printing here on the Orion, Orion printer. So just printing up part for a friend's vacuum cleaner, so that's what all that noise is about. Um, all right, let's go ahead and start this long run test. So I've had the uh, capacitor here on this 9 volt battery, I'm going to remove that, and we'll connect in. This is a 3,300 microfarad cap, and you can see it's already started, and right now it's running on the little ceramic capacitor there, but let me go ahead and connect that up. All right, so start the timer, and we are off. And uh, I'll leave this here running, and we'll check on it from time to time. Now, it's not sitting up on rubber feet or anything like that. So at the bottom, there's contact points making contact with the table. If I was really getting crazy about this, I would put it on glass. But to me, the number one uh, thing to shoot for is not necessarily runtime. That's an interesting novelty. What I think is the most important thing is to measure your current draw. Try to get that well under one microamp if possible, no greater than a microamp and a half, but I'm really shooting to get down at around a quarter microamp current draw. So just the lowest amount of current draw as possible. Now the way to measure that's between your electrolyte capacitor or even the uh, ceramic capacitor 
and your battery and just measure the current draw between those two points and try to bring that down to as low as possible while bringing the intensity of your light up to as high as possible and that's really the trick so anyway we're one minute in i expect this to run on and on for hours so we'll come back and check on, on it later okay so we're at approximately the one hour mark we're leaving to go to a family event so i'm going to be gone here over the next span of time i'll check it when we get back but basically one hour in the uh, 3d print continues um, this is actually 82 percent complete so pretty soon that print will be done and off the printer and uh, anyway we'll check in on this in another few hours okay so we're three hours uh, 24 minutes into the run test we got back from the family gathering just getting ready to put the kids to bed but uh, it runs on folks so this is a long runner and uh, very very happy with it and you know when I saw it running as long as it does on that ceramic capacitor I knew this would be a, a very long runner so it runs on here and uh, the 3d print has finished so it's probably cooled off probably ready to uh, to remove and uh, you can see here in the inside that I got a little bit of a mess up I created part of it a little too thin so I'll have to cut that out but this goes on this stainless steel Oh, look at that talk about a perfect fit perfect and this is actually for a vacuum cleaner for a friend so I'll cut out these uh, strings from the inside and uh, he'll be pretty happy with this so 3d printing man it's practical it's useful and uh, keeps making its usefulness known more and more as I continue to use it and my friends uh, continue to learn of its abilities and, and what it can do so anyway Fun little distraction there from the uh, run test, but this runs on. We'll check in on it later. Okay, so I can't believe what happened. I heard some noise out here. I came out here, and the cat has knocked over a cup of water. And it's, uh, what is it? It's almost 11 o'clock at night here, 10.58. And uh, it's run for 5 hours, 18 minutes. It's starting to blink along here dimly. But there was enough water out here all over when I came out here to check on this that... I wouldn't be surprised if there's some water messing this up. In fact, when I moved it from where it was at, it brightened up here a little. So, unfortunately, this long run test is messed up at this point, and I'll have to do it again in the future. And you know what? I may just go to a smaller capacitor, get a 1000 microfarad capacitor or something, just so that. I don't have to deal with such long run times, but uh, anyway, um, that's the update on what I'm calling the long runner here, folks. So it's it's running on, but it's on its last uh, legs. And again, I don't know to what degree moisture may have affected this. So. Bad kitty cat. All right, man. Let's all keep experimenting. Over.